So I want to talk today about frame control when it comes to sales. So with the position you guys in, you're to a degree working on the inbound sales side of the business, okay? So frame control is definitely more prevalent in an environment like that. So first of all, let me just distinguish why, what frame control is. So people talk about the frame when they talk about camera frame and frame control I use to refer to controlling the narrative and dialogue of a conversation in any room that you walk into. So typically people come to us or come to any salesperson because they have a need, they put their hand up. So whether they say it or they don't, they're looking for someone to take control of the conversation. They're looking for that someone to ultimately be their guide and to lead them forward on a path. So that's a really important thing to think about when it comes to any type of selling you're doing where someone is paying or potentially paying us for a service. So it has a carryover with account management as well or customer relationship management. The people want to feel that, oh, John, Troy has got his SHIT together because he's leading this call and he's come in and he's given me an expectation of how things should be. And there's a number of ways to communicate that, first of all. So number one, it's just your general frame. So when I talk about frame, I'm talking about your actual background and camera and setup. You want to look like someone who's professional in approach. Now, this can be very secondary if you lead in respect of how you introduce and all of those pieces. But you're, you're, you're in sales. You want you definitely want to look the part in general. So one of the things I would say is, as we discussed before, just get used to wearing... I mean, I'm wearing a Pearl Lemon branded t-shirt, but because you guys are client-facing, just get used to wearing shirts. Just just a, a, a loose shirt. It will help with some of the older people that you work with. And as much as people say it, it's very secondary, it helps because it gives that impression of professionalism. The second point is... The frame that like I've, I've, I've got the, the, the lightest background at the moment. So if you look at actual contrast, my contrast is the best, right? Because it's, 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 it's clear. I don't think there's any debate about that. And I can make it even potentially brighter still. You probably won't notice that. But that's just something else to be mindful of that if you do. And it's, 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 a, it's a simple thing. They do it with, with, with copywriting. If you close your eyes, let's just all close our eyes together. Count one, two, three, and then open them. So three, two one open the first thing that people will notice is me because of the strong contrast does that make sense so people will notice me immediately and then i dive into frame control so there's two aspects to this okay it's control of the frame and that is about you being the focus of the whole call cool meeting and it's not always easy to do but the clearer the background or the less distractions in the background the more the foreground becomes apparent and mm -hmm. then there's other simple things. I mean, ideally, I, for example, could, because I have a white background, it's okay, but I'm brown person, light colors, right? That helps. So the fact that, for example, you guys are wearing dark colors means that your face shows up more, literally, right? It's just a, it's a statement of fact. So that's just something in regards to the physical aspect of frame control and why it sets a little bit of a tone as to, okay, this person is a decision maker in this room. And you always want to give the impression that you're the decision maker, which is also why I talk about the concept of elements of dominance. So that can be, it can be bigger beards, it can be glasses, it's a shirt, right? That's, that's, that's why some of these small things have a bit of a place when it comes to the psychology of it. Some other people display it through like muscularity. You get some guys that wear t-shirts, but they're very muscular, but they're all different versions of the same thing. Does that make sense? It's just a different version of the same fucking thing. So, 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 so that's something that's important. Now, the, 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 the second element of it as you go in is a way that, and then if, if, if you think about it, they do this in assessment training centers and they do this in sports teams and they do that sports teams is a good one any kinds of teams teams have captains so calls phone calls can have captains as well and as much as some captains lead by example when you're in a room where you don't know who the captain is captains tend to make themselves known because captains are the natural leaders of the room and the natural leaders of the room tend to do something to the effect of you think about an audience where there's a dis disaster and emergency situations, okay? There's the, you know, military leaders, doctors, firefighters tend to be, guys, I just need your attention for a minute. Or the people that clink the glasses, champagne, champagne flutes and meetings, right? So you want to be the captain of the calls that you go into. And there's very simple triggers 
that demonstrate who are the captains of cults. They speak first. They introduce themselves first. They break the tension first. They speak confidently first. They come in seeming like subject matter experts first, okay? So being the first to speak is quite important because it tends to demonstrate that, okay, this is the person who runs the room because everyone's looking for the leader, right? And you'll see this with more experienced salespeople or people, and I use the word experience loosely, you'll see this with better salespeople that they tend to, when it's a call, where you need to ultimately impress, they tend to speak first, they tend to break the tension, they tend to introduce the room. So if there's several people in the room, introduce. Mm -hmm. so, so, so these things become important. And again, we've discussed this before, but we'll, 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 we'll talk about it again. Confident tone is, 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 is important. And just get, if, if, if you need to, get used to adding a bit of timber to your voice and just make it muscle memory. There's some guys that when they go to, you'll do the same thing. If you're on a beach, you'll naturally clench your abs because people are looking. People do it. All men do it. Unless you've got such a big pouch that it just doesn't matter. But if you're any way slim, you, 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 you clench your stomach muscles. Project your voice. Just be in the habit of when I'm in a meeting, I'm going to talk a little bit louder, literally louder. I'm going to talk a little bit louder and I'm going to communicate first because then people will look to me as being the natural leader of the room. And if you're not doing that in any meetings you go into, then you immediately signify that you're not the person that runs the room. And if you're not the person that runs the room, then it calls into question your ability to take and win the business and to deliver the work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. People correlate confidence with competency does that make sense we all do it right that guy seems confident if this is his first time but yeah but look look he and the person who's got three years of experience they're a bit quiet they mumble now these are extremes right but the the the, the nuances all begin to matter and and this will apply in any room that you go into and it's not just about selling now in a sales environment it's about any group within which you want to display leadership or to show that you're someone that can be relied upon. I'll say it again, confidence, often people correlate with confidence, competence, and it's a proxy. People think, oh, if you're confident, you must be competent. And and and, and that, 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 that is illustrated or demonstrated by being the first to speak, by introducing people, by breaking the ice. And then also we spoke about it before, by having some semblance of product knowledge. And when I say product knowledge, it doesn't take that long. If you get used to five or 10 minutes in advance of a call and the more you do it, the quicker you'll be able to do it. So in the beginning, it might take you 30 minutes. It might take you one hour to research the company, the person, to learn some of the keywords, much like SEO or much like anything. What are the main things that I can say that I'll communicate that I ultimately am subject aware as well as prospect aware. So subject is your knowledge of the subject. Prospect is your knowledge of the prospect. And then company aware could be your knowledge of their company. Okay, so there's three buckets here. People are impressed. They'll say, wow, John did his research. John looked at my LinkedIn profile. John looked at our company page. John already had some comments. John saw what was happening in the news when it came to our company. And what happens, and this is, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, John. No, I, was, I, was, I did exactly that this morning. I researched into the call that I had and I went and saw that they had resellers in different countries and I addressed the one in the UK because the call was from to the UK and I addressed the exact retail in particular. I could see her face. She was like clearly impressed. Yeah, so exactly. Too. Exactly. So so, so, so the, 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 the bar is if you do anything less than having that company and product and individual knowledge, then you're not going to be the most impressive guy in the room. And the distinctions as you go up the levels and ladders of success are minimal in terms of what one person does is different from the other. So prep is really important. And, and the truth is in an inbound sales environment, and actually most teams work in inbound sales, many teams work in inbound sales environment because you get leads that come into you unless you're out and out prospecting. Most people get lazy because they just have leads coming in, leads coming in, leads coming in, leads coming in, and they just jump from call to call. 
But if you drill into your headspace that I must be prospect aware and company aware and industry aware, and there's 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 that third layer as you go up the levels of competency, because you can be aware of the individual that you're talking to, John, Portuguese, based between South Africa and Portugal, looking he's in a traditional type of home based upon those bottles, looking based upon you know his age and his demeanor, maybe in his mid twenties, sunny day right now, probably enjoying the sunshine in. Don't get me wrong, I would add many additional layers to it based on looking at your LinkedIn profile, okay? These are just visual aids that I'm using, but you become person aware, then you become company aware, which is Pearl Lemon, okay, Pearl Lemon Group, overall company, and then you can become subject aware or industry aware of the industry that Pearl Lemon are in. And then you can understand what are some of the keywords that relate. To, and, and now that we've got tools like ChatGPT and Gemini, it's very quick to get that knowledge that you need. And then you bring that to a call and you impress people. And you can build that in to your elevator in less than 30 seconds. And you just already distinguish yourself in those first 30 seconds, and which is why that's the area of frame control. So instead of it being, oh, hey, John, so I know that we're here to talk about SEO with Four Pearl Lemons. So I'd just love to hear more about how we can support you. I'd say, John, uh, John, good morning. First of all, I, I hear that you're in, I understand that you're in Lisbon, I think. I actually went surfing in Cascais a, three year, a couple of years back and really, really love the chicken that they do in Lisbon because I don't know if you've been to the UK with something called Nando's. The chicken you guys do there is much, much better. Whatever they're doing at these joints in the UK, they're ripping us off. Anyway, that's just a side note. I know that we're here today to talk about Pearl Lemon. I know I understand it's part of the Pearl, well, what wider Pearl Lemon group, and you've got accountancy, you've got legal, you've got catering. So look, I presume at some level we're here to talk about how we can help you generate more inbound leads across the entire group. Really impressive what I think. Is it the founder, Deepak, what he's doing at Pearl Lemon? So just seems like a really impressive company to be part of. Anyway, really looking forward to seeing how we could help you today. Do you see the difference? Literally, yeah. And do you understand that that doesn't require that? And this is the thing that's crazy to me. The additional work required to change that intro takes probably another five minutes. The difference and, and, and that difference can be the difference to people hiring us versus hiring anyone else, because everyone is a subject matter expert at one point or another on what they sell. But people buy people that are subject matter experts on the person they're selling to. It's like, I know you. I know your industry. It's like I'm saying the right things and the right words. Oh, I get that sense of reassurance, of assurance. So, so, so you will be able to distinguish yourself based upon not only the way that you introduce. And we're beginning, you, you see, we're beginning to build quite a lot of important things in the first 30 seconds. Imagine now meeting a group of people because sometimes you'll do calls. There'll be more than one decision maker. There'll be several guys turning up. Be like, oh, hey, John, Media Lift. I'm guessing it's Troy based upon the email that I saw on the invite. So, hey, Troy. Hey, John. My name's Deepak. First of all, just really pleased to be meeting both of you guys. And I just happen to notice, I, th I think that you're both, you might be both be South African, but John, I noticed that you're in Cape Town. You know, always be the first to introduce always be confident with the way that you introduce, always be clear in the little elements of research that you've done. And you can, if you get disciplined, build that in to your opening elevator and already distinguish yourself as someone that this man's done his research. This man seems confident. This man seems to have a sense about of my business. And already, whether they smile or not, you'll warm the heart and they'll have the feeling that, okay, great. I'm talking to someone who really knows what he's what he's doing. And, and, and this is what then in the instances where you can't change your background, there are issues with the lighting, there are various other issues. All of that can fall away because the level with which you introduce yourself supersedes, stands way above anything else, if that makes sense. Because the way that you introduce the things, the content of your introduction, as well as the confidence with which you compose your introduction is so good that they can't ignore you. So good that it means nothing else matters. And so good when it comes to their final decision based on all of the comparative proposals, they think, well, you know what? John seemed to know my company better. John seemed 
like a real leader. John looks like he can manage and control the room. And ultimately, I'm hiring someone who's better at that thing that I'm hiring than I am. And that's really what I want from this conversation. Because if I wanted someone to do exactly what I told them and exactly how I wanted it, I would have got ultimately an employee as opposed to a contracted agency or legal representative or accountant. And 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 it's incredible what you can demonstrate. Guys, this is the first 30, 60 seconds. You get it. And 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 again, it relates to all introductions. Just be strong, be the first to speak, have a little bit of product knowledge, reference it, make a joke. And 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 I'll follow this up by saying, or I'll finish. I'll wrap this up by saying that your ability to execute this effectively will be very much dependent upon how you're prepared to drill, as in practices. Because what happens again, it's the biggest issue is that people don't then go out and do the practice, actually do the practice. Say, you know what, just for one week, Troy, John, together we're going to get on a Zoom call and we're going to do 15 minutes of strong introductions to each other. We're going to pull up a random prospect from my calendar. We're both going to do independent research, different prospects, and we're both going to introduce. And we're going to do it in 15, 15 minutes together, five minute blocks. So or 20 minutes, two introductions each. You've got, five, you've got four minutes to research, one minute to pitch. Four minutes to research, one minute to pitch. Four minutes to research, one something like that, right? Develop a structure that allows you to become extremely competent at the, your delivery and your introduction up and until the point that you start to get diminishing returns upon your time. Meaning that you'll probably do it for one week and you'll reach such a level of competency so quickly that you might not need to do much of it anymore. And if you systematically work on every aspect of your sales process with this methodical type structure, you can get really good really, really quickly, because most of your competition, the other sales reps, aren't doing stuff like this. Because most people don't proactively work on their areas of weakness. They're not even sometimes aware of what their weaknesses are. And everyone, without a doubt, is getting on-the-job training. That's what they all do. Sales guys often practice their sales pitch by having more sales pitches, and that's totally cool. But you don't separate yourself in that way. Because that's literally what everyone else is doing. Because, of course, by default, you kind of do it. And don't get me wrong, you should do a AAR, which is an after-action report, to analyze what happened. After the action has happened, spend a minute to think, what could I have done better? How can I improve the next time? These are important things to do. And we'll talk about that perhaps in a separate training. Because most people don't really take literally just a minute to really think about irrespective of all of the surrounding circumstances, all of the other variables, the variable that I can control is me, what I bring to the call, what I bring to the conversation, my level of prep, what could I have done better based upon how that call went. But also doing that preemptively, as well as reactively, which is where you do the AAR, the after action report, what could we have done better? How did that call go? Three things that I think next time I'm going to do better. But ahead of that, there's 20 minutes a day, guys, or however you want to do it, four hours one day, you get, and this is where I went back and refer back to the cramming thing. You cram, just like I talk about, the five minutes of cramming for a call leads to an exponentially better call. And you literally will see such a differential result if you do cram for the call. Why not cram for all of the calls that you'll have? By spending a week cramming strong introductions, by spending a week saying, you know what, if I even need, and I see that you've not done it, John, it's just a simple example. I see that you've not even tried to play with your background. You maybe move the light a little bit here, but you're not, you're not bothered. Because, because, most, because, because most people, without knowing it, don't work hard enough on systematically different elements of the way that they pitch. All of it counts. All of it counts. And the compound effect of it is that then you start to differentiate yourself in terms of results. I mean, think about it. You get 30, 40 leads a month, whatever you get. You want to be making £25,000 a month banked for Pearl Lemon because then you can come in and control the narrative and say, Deepak, look at my sales figures. But we live and die by our ability to look at what we're doing, how we're doing it, and really work to improve it. And 
that's where I can draw the parallel and say, you know what, John's not changed his background. We spoke about that. So now I have a sense about John's general approach and ethos to how he sells. And I was saying this to Aaron and Shania, and I'll say it to you. Demand nothing but excellence from yourself. And the way to be excellent is to work on every aspect of the work that you do. And most people are not prepared to actually put in the work. And that's why most people get mediocre results from the work they put in. I say the same thing to you, Troy. At the weekend, you said you spent some time on Saturday. I noticed that you said that, but you didn't do it. And then I came in and it, and, and for you, it was okay. And I just feel bad for you guys because I'm like, oh, wow. Not, not for me, because I'm like, wow. Is that the standards that you keep in your own lives? Is that how you treat yourself? Is that the level of integrity you have for yourself? That you'll say things or you'll hear things, you'll agree with those things, you'll commit to things, and then you will not do at least 20% of the things that you'll say you'll do. I feel bad for you. Does that make sense? I, I just feel bad for you. I'm like, why, 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 why would you treat yourself like that? Why do that? What kind, you know, what, how does that speak to the kind of man that you want to be in your relationships, in your lives and as human beings? It's like, you know, you don't want to be the kind of guy that I will do 80% of the things that I say I will do. So what the fuck? Because that's what you actually end up saying. So that's why frame control and your ability to practice frame control can have such a huge impact upon the return that you'll get from selling and how, as ever, your ability to prep and to be proactive and preemptive can really change the results that you get from selling. And, and, and the crazy thing is, and hopefully you become conscious to it now, it's, it's, it's a couple of mornings drilling the frame control and already all of your calls will go so much better.